what's up? This is Shay Rodriguez with Sky Level Media, and we are here with Pee Wee Longway talking all things Blue M&M. Pee Wee, thanks so much for sitting down today. Mm-hmm. You're more than welcome. Thank you, thank you. So we're going to jump right into it. 2012, let's go back to that kind of time frame. What kind of inspired you to start rapping? Well, Wicked and yeah, um, Doug. Young Thug and Wicked. Young Thug and Wicked? Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, how did you actually meet up with Gucci? How did you guys first meet? Well, from a club. It's a long time ago, like a club called Lib- named the Libra. Okay. Yeah, we met in there. You met in there. And how did your relationship kind of progress? We kept it street. You kept it street? Okay, so a year later, after you start rapping, you go ahead and sign with 1017 with Gucci, right? No, man. No? No. So how did it kind of play out? We, 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 were, we were best of friends in the street. We just kept it We kept it cool amongst each other. Like, you know what I mean? Off of him, he was for me. He just wanted to help me, and I, I wanted to help him. And that's all it was, one sign in there. Okay, you didn't sign to him. So how do you think Gucci kind of helped you in that beginning time frame with your career? Nobody know who I was. He just, I mean, basically made me really, really want to rap and then just put it out. But, you know, he basically put us out to somebody know who he was. Okay, okay. You've done a lot of behind-the-scenes work in the rap game. By, were you the first person to introduce Young Thug to Gucci? We, we did somewhat, yes. You did somewhat. How did that story kind of play out? I mean, you know, he asked us to bring, brought them over there to him, and that's what I did. And he wasn't in like that, like, bro, you know Thug? I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. bring him to me. Okay, okay. And Blue Eminem. The first mixtape that you put out, not the first mixtape that you put out altogether, but that first Blue Eminem, because we're really going to get into this Blue Eminem series. How did that name come about? Blue Eminem. I mean, you know, it's a nice color, first and foremost. Mm-hmm. I mean, the Eminem will come like the millions, like multi million. Okay, so I had nothing to do with the candy at all. No. No. <laughs> Do you happen to like M&M's at all? Now, yes, I do. <laughs> now, yes, you do. Do you pick? I don't. <laughs> you don't pick out the blue ones, Steve? Mm-hmm. No. No, I can just eat them all. <laughs> you know how I go fat boy status. <laughs> fat boy status. I see in a few of your pictures, you like to kind of wear your shirt open. Yeah, I kind of try to be presentable and be nice. Young <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. But whatever makes you comfortable. I don't know. I'll try everything. <laughs> okay, cool. So, Blue Eminem comes out, mm-hmm. and you put out a couple more mixtapes after that, and then you went into Blue Eminem too. What kind of keeps you with that Blue Eminem theme going on? It, it, it kind of just it's it, it's it's explain who I am when I do them series. And and the fans take it like more serious than I do, so I guess I got to keep it going. But the Blue Eminem, the, the Eminem CDs itself, it kind of explain more of me. Okay, and for somebody who's just listening to you, they're just hopping on the Pee Wee Longway wave. What do you think they would have gotten from Blue and Blue Eminem One and Blue Eminem Two? I can't say they they they. I don't know. That guess they explain trap rapper. I guess that what they mm-hmm. say. Yeah, that's that's what they're saying right now. That's what it is. So that was around 2015, correct? That Blue Eminem two came out. Yeah. You also tweeted that same year. You know what I'm saying? Because you're looking back, like you know what I'm gonna ask you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. You also tweeted that same year that you were gonna quit rap. Don't contact you about that anymore. Is back to BS, correct? I was being dramatic. You, yeah, you were <laughs> slightly, because then a couple of days later you were back promoting projects, correct? Yeah, 
funny. I was trying to be two faced. I was acting like a Gemini that day. You were acting like a Gemini that day? What's your sign? Are you a Gemini? Leo. Oh, you're, you were acting like a Gemini, but you're a Leo. Leo, being two faced with the music. You're being two faced with music? Mm hmm. Maybe your moon was aligned with like the Gemini stars that day. Say it. <laughs> <laughs> okay so what kind of put you in that mood that you would even tweet something like that nothing nothing because I ain't, I ain't I want to know bitch shit like no nah, I want to know bitch shit first no nah, <laughs> <laughs> nah, I was just tripping with myself I just have a mood swing with myself was that mood swing more about like the mainstream success are you kind of craving that mainstream success yeah I mean, it'd be good to do, but I mean, it's going to come when it comes. They're going to snatch me. You know how to reap You know what happened. When the time and time, I ain't just too much craving it. That's understandable. With with this blue M&M 3 project coming out, is that what you think you're going to get? That mainstream success? I would, I would hope so. Cause, okay, so I'm going to tell you. Right. You could go with the best of them. Like... You could do that sing-songy thing like Young Thug. You can kind of flow like Gucci, but then you could really get like your lyrics in there, in there. Mm -hmm. So you could keep up with the with the best of them. <laughs> what why why don't you think why don't you think that mainstream success has come yet? Mm. You don't know. You know the mainstream is a reaper. They gotta come get me one day. When the reaper get me, he get me. And you ready for it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, because you have done so much behind the scenes, because you were also the connect between the Migos and Quality Control, correct? They're my whole family. We, we all family, man. We got connected some kind of way. We just all connected dots. Okay, so how does it make you feel that they've all blown up? Because you've worked with New York rappers too. That's what it was. You know, it wasn't all for me, it was for them. Mm -hmm. One for me, one thing about myself. It was for them. That's super stand up. That's stand up that you, you know, you could connect them and still work on your own stuff and not be kind of where you are projecting yourself at right now, currently. Yeah. It is what it is. We all family. That's what's up. You have any music coming with Thug sooner rather than later? I mean, it's a question mark. We should be working. We working. We working. You working? Mm -hmm. Okay, so in the single Stepped On, that's out here, um, you say, I'm, I'm trying to get my rapper voice together so I can sound like you. <laughs> I'm trying to get together. Um, don't trust, no, it's too much touch and bust out here. <laughs> I have no flow. <laughs> Please don't make fun of me. <laughs> Too much touch and bust out here. Don't trust on but my Glock out here, correct? Yeah. What did you mean by that? I mean, you know, to touch and bust come from a street um, point of view. Where if it's, if it's, it's, it's touch and bust, it ain't cooked up, it ain't straight drop. You see what I'm saying? Some of these guys, they, they cut, like they ain't all the way 100. Mm -hmm. um, they ain't who they said he is. You see what I'm saying? And I can't really trust them but my Glock I can that's all they're gonna fall back to when you dealing when you put yourself in so I mean, when you involve yourself with the ones who ain't all the way one hundred or what they call itself a thousand. Okay, okay. But it seems like you really only rock with MPA, correct? Yeah, I know. Yes, ma'am. So that distrust shouldn't even come into the equation. No, I mean just letting them know. Okay. If they need to be warned. They can just listen to that song and they can know. Don't don't try nothing crazy. Mm -hmm. So explain MPA to those who don't know. Money, power, ambition. Okay. <laughs> okay, and who are they to you? Family. That's family, but you guys are also a crew of musicians, correct? Rappers, mm -hmm. you produce, you, yeah? Mm -hmm. So who's up next from the MPA camp? Man, MPA Wicked, man, Low Light Black. Okay, okay. Yeah, Shakur. Okay, okay. So we're going to switch gears a little bit and talk about Atlanta rap, the state of Atlanta rap. So you already called yourself a trap rapper earlier in the interview, correct? Whatever you want me to be. <laughs> okay, well, that's what you said earlier, that you were a trap rapper. Based on what you said the first two, the 
people said. Okay, okay. So there was an article written about rap, and you know, rap at this point it's in Atlanta. It kind of migrates. Used to be in New York. Used to reside in Cali for a little bit, but now it's really taking the culture of the South. How many years? For how many years? What has it been taking this culture? Definitely the past ten. I mean, Outkast well, definitely had. Stick to the A. We're up in the A right now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're in the A right now. So a lot of rappers are talking about drug culture, and it's not the drug culture 